Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. All right, all right. Thank God, thank God, thank God. We give God praise for today. Thank God for, um, let's say this is the first Q&A this year because last month was hung out for worship ministers and so this is the first in the year and then God has been so faithful. This is the sixth one as well. We started wow. in August, September, October, November, December, and this is the sixth one, and God has been faithful. So today, without wasting so much time, we are talking about the anointing and the gifting. I'm anointed, do I need to be, to, do I need, I mean, I'm gifted, do I need to be anointed? So many questions we have, and if you have any question as well, please feel free to just type in your questions, and then we trust the Holy Spirit, and then... Um, Yes, to answer the question to our guest, Pastor Oluwafem. Let me quickly um, introduce him as we go straight to the Q&A this, this, to this evening. Pastor Oluwafem Yoladele is a seasoned teacher of God's Word, the author of Weekly Digest, a weekly Christian publication that has gained attention of those desires of successful Christian work and spiritual growth. Is also a pastor passionate about youth finding their place in God's agenda. And his new book, I have it here, although I will still ask questions from it, placing a demand on the anointing. We are so glad to have you here. Welcome so much. We, we, we welcome you, Pastor Femi. And Thank then you. we trust the Holy Spirit to um, give us answers to the questions that we have on anointing and gifting. Even before I go into question and answer, what can you say briefly about anointing? What, before I go into asking you questions that I have here, what can you say briefly about anointing and gifting? Well, anointing and uh, gifting are two important elements for anyone who is going to make impact both as I involve the kingdom of God and the air on earth, the gift is very, very important, but much more important is the anointing because it is the anointing that makes the difference. It's the anointing that, you know, separates the boys from the men, so to speak. It's the anointing that actually uh, the, the, you know, gives that open announcement of divine approval. And so if the anointing is not there, everything will just be, you know, plastic, will be cosmetic, will be, you know, just, uh, just superficial. But once the anointing is involved, then the divinity is involved, then we can then expect the miraculous. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You have muted. Oh, sorry. Okay, I said, so when we're talking about gifting, and I know that, you, like you said, that gifting is okay, but much more important is the anointing. So what is gifting? All right. Well, gifting talks about the natural endowment. You know, your, when, when, a naturally endowed ability, you know, that uh, gives somebody the opportunity to do in a unique way, effortless way, something that many people may not be able to do, you know, or may not be able to do effectively. Uh, so when we're talking about gifting, we're talking about a natural endowment. It's something that, you know, is, 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 is part of you. It's something that you didn't buy. It's something that just like a talent, gifted, you were given by God himself. Uh, so it's something that you have within you and other persons may want to do the same thing you are doing, but it's just that you can do it effortlessly. You can do it without stress. You can do it more conveniently. Uh -huh. So that's, that's, that, that is a gift. It's a gift to be able to do effortlessly and in a unique way what others may not be able to do or may not do effectively. An endowment. Amazing, amazing. So what is the anointing? All right, when we're talking about the anointing now, we are now talking about the divine enablement on that natural endowment. The divine enablement to be able to achieve 
what is humanly impossible. The anointing is a, 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 an endowment, is a supernatural en enablement. When God, in his own infinite uh, wisdom, gives somebody an enablement. You know, when you're talking about anointing, you're talking about something that is, you know, can destroy yokes. You're talking about something that can make mm. the impossible possible. You're talking about something that, you know, can, you know, make even the scientists and the, you know, scholars of the world go crazy and say, how can this be when the anointing comes to play? You know, like, uh, maybe we may still get there, you know, when we're talking about anointing, we also need to clarify because the anointing of that comes from God is to drive the purposes and counsels of God. Uh -huh. So when you look at the madman at the mad at the at the uh, uh, madman of Gadara, mm. the man also was able to do something that was humanly impossible, but it was because there was there were demons living on the inside of him. Uh -huh. So he, he 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 was doing things that were humanly impossible because there was a supernatural sort of that was at work. But our focus is not on the demonic supernatural. Our focus is on the heavenly divine supernatural. And so the anointing is what can make someone to be able to penetrate into the realm of impossibility and come out with results. As we saw in the story of David, when Saul was, you know, uh, possessed with the spirit of insanity. They said, let's look for a man who can play. Mm. The man that was sought was David. Now, the gift was enough to bring him to the palace, but it was the anointing that would drive the demons out. Hey. So if the man was invited based on his gift, and the anointing to drive the demons was not present, it will have just been rendered useless. Oh, true. So true. if the gift is not coupled with the anointing, then we cannot be talking about so much that can mm. be achieved. Mm. You know, like you said, if David was just invited because of his skill, he would just be entertaining the, just entertaining the king. And the demons will still be there. They will still be there, tormenting all of them. But I think it was the anointing. I think, you know, there is a way anointed to announce this one. Because for, for David to have been recommended, it means they have heard and they have seen some things. All right. Okay, so here comes the question. I am gifted. Everybody, they know that. They know that for me. They know that, oh, when it comes to singing, when it comes to playing, when it comes to this, I'm very gifted. Do I still need anointing? Yes. You know, just like our... <laughs> yes, you, thank you for that question. You know, just like I, I, I said um, earlier about David, you know, he was gifted, you know, but the difference came with the anointing. Mm. The anointing mm. is what separates the worshiper from a disco singer. The anointing mm. is what separates those who are, you know, uh, really connected to the throne of God from those who are just casual uh, seekers. The anointing is what is going to really make the difference. People don't just want to, you know, it, it's not enough to say, okay, I can sing, I can dance, I can do this, I can play instruments, I can do that. How much of heaven's backing do you enjoy? How much of heaven do you bring along with you? How much of heaven is released by, the, by, by your ministration? And that is why the anointing, you know, cannot be pushed aside when you are talking about a fulfilled uh, ministry, ministry in singing, in worship. You remember in the, in the book of Second Kings, when uh, chapter three, when Elisha was invited by some kings to, you know, seek the face of God on how the journey is going to be. And the man, you know, after his outburst about the kings, idol worshiping kings and all that, by the time he decided to seek the face of God, he said, bring me a minstrel. It was when the minstrel started playing that the Holy Spirit came. And so those who know the value, those who appreciate the value of divine presence, they don't joke with anointing because it is 
in the place of this divine presence that will receive inspiration for songs. It is in the place of this divine presence that will get clarity of what God wants done. It's the place of this divine presence that yokes are destroyed, that people get liberated. People go for programs and they say, well, I, I, as, the, as, the, as the man of the woman of God started leading worship, I just felt the power of God hit me and this, this happened. All those will not be possible if it's just about the gift. If it's just the don't gift, don't go you too far can... because we are still going to how to differentiate those that are, <laughs> those that are gifted um, from those that are anointed. Okay, so we're right. talking about this anointing. Is there a particular, a special price to pay? To pay? Maybe we have to pay a certain amount of money, or is there a price? Is there a price to being anointed? Well. When we're talking about being anointed, and I, I'm, I'm trying to confine it to a worshiper, a music yes. minister, and all that. When we're talking about the place of this anointing, how do I get it? It's in the place of faithfulness to your calling. If Amen. God has called you and said, this is where I want you to be, you know, it's not for you to now say, ah, how about so, 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 and so, how about so, so, and so, how about so, so, and so, I want to also, you know, uh, do what he's doing. If you are faithful where you are, Jesus Christ said, if you are faithful in little, you will, help, you will get more. No. And so sometimes, you know, uh, there are many ways by which this anointing, you know, comes upon a minister. You know, uh, the case of David, we had Prophet Samuel visiting the house, laying hands on him, pouring oil on him. You know, we have, but some other, in some, in some other cases, you may just see somebody who, who, like I heard of a great man of God who, you know, was serving as a pastor. He's going to be with the Lord now. He was serving as a pastor. And in the place of worshiping, he said in just one afternoon, he felt like a blanket came upon him and he knew that it was the gift of teaching. He had been anointed to teach. Now, if he had not been faithful in the pastoring aspect, there was no way he would be committed to a greater calling. Absolutely. And so if I'm, if I'm to be anointed to be effective in music ministry, what are the things that God has set aside that I should do have I identified myself? Have I identified my calling? Have I identified, you know, uh, the, the responsibilities that God has set ahead of me? Amen. And if I have done that, how faithful am I to that calling? How faithful am I to that calling? How, how willing am I to make sacrifice? Because this anointing doesn't just come. You know, occasionally we, we get some people who say, well, when you just see a great man of God, you know, that is anointed, just take a seat, <laughs> put in his hand. So as soon as he lays his hand on you, you receive the anointing and then you begin to manifest. Ah, they should, if, they, they, if, if such persons will see Elisha, he will tell them, I say, oh God, doesn't what you are seeing, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> you have to be consistent in the place of service consistence in the place of sacrifice and be sold out to God. It's God himself who needs you for that higher calling that will grace you for that calling. Mm. He will give you the anointing to be able to fulfill the assignment. So the price for the anointing is identifying your calling, stay faithful to that calling and be ready to make sacrifices. Be ready to make Why? sacrifices. Yes. Stay faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Be ready to and be willing to make sacrifice. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, okay, before I go to differentiate who is gifted from um, who is anointed, when it comes to this anointing and then, is it for some certain set of people or is open to anybody or anyone available? No, there are some people that say, oh, this one is anointed. Is the anointing made for some set of people? <laughs> okay, now when it comes to uh, the manifestations, you know, people sorry, are maybe, quick to. Sorry, sir. Maybe, oh, this person has given his life to Christ for long, so he's qualified to be anointed. 
or this person has been serving uh, this pastor faithfully, so he's qualified to be anointed. Is it? Is there a kind of? Okay, we still get to how it's measured, but is this, is, there, is there any qualification or something that um, attracts one to say, okay, this one is this one should be anointed. This one is not due yet to be anointed. All right. I think I think I will just approach that question from this angle, that the way God views faithfulness is different from the way man views faithfulness. Mm. The, way the, way God, man views, the way God views faithfulness is different from how we... How human beings view human faithfulness. Beings you know, faithfulness. occasionally, some people will feel that, all right, if I can just be going to church, occasionally buy work clock or meet the needs of the church or this and all that, maybe I'm... That way, God will say, I'm faithful. But hmm. if God is expecting you to move from point A to point B, and you say, no, I want to stay on point A, as far as God is concerned, you have not passed that faithfulness test. And so why would Elijah tell Elisha and say, all right, uh, stay back. I want to... I, I will be, I will be, God has sent me to Jordan. God has to sent Jericho. me to Jericho. God has sent me to Bethel. It was just a proof, a human confirmation of the faithfulness of this man. Mm. I want to see with my own eyes. And so some people do things for showmanship. So many people do things so, so that everybody you. can know that, all right, I'm the one there, you know. Uh, you want to do something so that your pastor can notice you. You want to do something so that everybody in the choir can recognize that you are gifted. You want to do something so that it, those are not the ways God views faithfulness. God views faithfulness in those little, little things that he has committed into your hands. How, uh, how responsible are you? Do you deliver? Do you meet the the do you meet all those obedience, those little, little instructions? How have you been able to do that? So we can't be talking about uh, somebody getting ready to be anointed when we, are not, we have not concluded on consecration, when we have not concluded on somebody being sold out to God. So many people want the anointing for different reasons, and that's why they don't get it. Some persons, they just want to blow. That's the word. They say, <laughs> I want to blow. I've been in this thing. I've been in this hustle for a long time. Uh, I just need somebody to just feature me on their album. I just need this and don't let them just know that uh, this and all that. And so God who knows the hand from the beginning, the beginning. Thank you, knows your motive mm. is wrong. You won't get it. True. That's why Gehazi motive. couldn't get mm. the anointing. His motive was not right. Even though he was with Elijah, he was staying with him. He was going in and out with him. But his motives were not there, were not right. And so there was no way he could get the double portion. You know, so it's all about God knowing the intents of your hearts. Why do you want to Why be anointed? Want Why do you want to be singled out to be used by God? Why do you want God to use you? If the reason you want God to use you is so that people can know that you are popular, so that you can win, then you have missed the point. Mm. You have missed the point. If God calls you and says, stay in this place, and you are saying, well, nobody will see me in this church. We are just about 25. My anointing is for mega, mega places. I need to go to <laughs> places where, you know, if I just sound my, my voice once, my Hello. destiny helper will show up, you know? And you just move. By that decision alone, you have walked yourself out of the counsel of God. Most of the people, most of the people that we see today, I will say this man is anointed. Any man, anytime he carries the microphone, things will happen. Ask questions. Mm. When you ask them, they will tell you their story of faithfulness, their story of their committed sacrifice when nobody was seeing them. They play the times that. They were doing it as if, you know, their life depended on it. And they were not expecting anything in return. And God was counting it for them. The Bible says that Abraham obeyed God and God accounted God it as righteousness. righteousness. Mm. So some of these little, little things that we think don't matter. Some of us, we, we've on our own worked ourselves out of 
the, the plans and purposes of God because we think the way we think is the way God is seeing things. If God is going to help me, then he will put me where my destiny helps her. And then we look for where those big, big pockets, money bags are, and then we try and look for who can link us, who can do this, who can do this. And then we expect that once we get all those ones, who told you that in that place where you are just 25, something will not happen that will announce you? Absolutely. David was just in the back, back of the desert. He was just in the wilderness. You know, recently I was just going over that story and I asked myself a question. I said, the man who introduced David to the palace, the Bible didn't tell us his name. Mm. And I don't know what gave that man the audacity to make such recommendation. Because those things that the man said were very weighty. He said, this man is a man of valor. Has he seen where David fought? He said, this man is anointed. The hand of God is on him. He is this, he is that. I said, where did he get all these things from? What most people don't know is that the one that God will use to link you up to your next face, most of the time they are unknown, but they are watching. They are watching. And so occasionally, God will just decide and say, all right, this is the way I want to go. This is the way I want to go. But if the anointing is to come upon a man, aside from the place of sacrifice, you've been staying faithful, you've been doing this, then you must be rest assured that you need to understand timing. You need to understand divine timing. If you... Pastor, don't go into thing. that timing yet. Don't go to right. timing yet. <laughs> all right. Don't go to timing all right. yet. Wow, wow. You know, one thing I've discovered too about this anointing, like you mentioned, you have to be dead to self. Mm. Like, be sold out. Let your motives be right. Not okay, like you mentioned, not for showmanship. Because if, the, if, if your intentions were not right from the beginning, there, there is no how the anointing will come. The thing can just, you know, there is a way the gifting and the way people are praising you, you will think, okay, oh, I'm anointed, the way people are responding. All right. But people, yes, have arrived. But definitely you can, the, the whole place can be filled, people can just be happy, and then with your gifting, you are ministering to them, or you are just, uh, how do I put it? That they are, they are hearing you and they are cheering you up. And they have their bodies, but is that anointing, when that anointing comes upon you, then when you are ministering, then you will see the anointing. You will see the yoke being broken. It's the anointing Absolutely. that breaks the yoke. Absolutely. It's not being skillful. It's not being gifted. Okay, mm. Pastor, please. How do we not differentiate? How do we know, okay, this person is gifted. This person is anointed. I'm the person that has both. These are three, kinds, right. of, these are three kinds of people I'm talking about now. The anointed, okay, no, let's the gifted. Because you cannot be anointed and not. Oh, is it possible to be anointed and not gifted? Where you are the pastor, step well, us out. Well, one thing that I I need to also say is that before God will commit His oil upon a man, there must be value. Mm. Before God will release His oil upon a man, there must there be must value. Be that value. is. That person has paid the price. He has sharpened himself. He is prepared to be a battle axe. He is prepared to be a vessel unto honor. He has paid the price. And is, the anointing is just to serve as a catalyst to enable him to do more and achieve more. And so when we're talking about someone who is gifted and somebody who is anointed, how do we, how do we recognize the two? or differentiate you know there was a story i i i, I had some several years ago about uh, a conference that was called where a young lady you know was given the microphone to sing psalm 23 and the lady did it so professionally by the time she finished singing everyone was on their feet clapping mm. <laughs> Please, can I sing the same song? 
and said, all right, no problem. We'll see how some time. It, will, it can't be any better than the professional. What we have heard. Man, don't just disgrace yourself. A man pleaded, all right, let's, let's, let's have you too. By the time the man finished singing, everybody was on their knees weeping. Mm. Mm. One was gifted, the other anointed. Anointed. Mm. The gift will reach out to the human, uh, to the sense realm. The gift will touch the people. The people will feel excited. Yes. It's the yes, anointing yes. that can penetrate into yes. the soul. Mm. It's the anointing that can link that the people the up to God. Is the anointing that can make the people bring God down to the people. Mm. Most mm. of the time, what people celebrate when you're talking about uh, these talent horns or gifts, whatever, is just you know gifts, just appreciating on uh, just superficial uh, something. But when you're talking about the anointing, one someone who carries that grace connects. He may not sing much. It may just be a song of his, about four lines or whatever. It may, be a, it may be an old known song. True. By the time the person sings, everywhere is charged. You know, I remember yeah. the story of this man, Domwe. He said he, he was uh, just in his room uh, singing, I just want to be where you are, playing the piano. And the cloud of glory filled the house, came in. Uh, so most of the time, the person that is recognized to be the anointed is just the person who has been able to bring an overflow of his private closet to the public. Mm, thank you. Some okay. persons don't have that private encounter, but they want God to show up on the stage. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. So when we see someone who's focus is, you know, uh, shall we say that maybe the person is more interested in reaching the people than bringing God to the people, then we can know the, the, the difference. You know, some, there are some ministers, once we invite them to sing, the moment from the moment they grab the microphone, it's just worshiping, linking you up. Some persons will come They'll say, ah, don't mind my voice. I've been going for this and this and all that, you know. So the anointing is, is, is something that makes it unmistakable for the carrier to the be anointing recognized. anointing makes it unmistakable. You, you can't, you can't, you will recognize. You Once you see the person, it. you will just know. It may be, that's the, that's the interesting part of it. You know, when God breathes on an old song, and gives it a new revelation to you, and you bring that revelation to the people. The people are not seeing it as an old song. They are, their experience with that song is completely transformed. Sure. Just because you're coming from your own encounter and you're bringing the people into your own personal encounter. True. Mm. True. Thank you so much, Pastor. Because even to get this anointed, to get a, to extract all, you have to crush it. Just like grapes, crushing the secret place, the place of intimacy, your fellowship with God, the anointing comes from there. And you know, Absolutely. like when you, when, when, you were, when you were saying something now, something dropped because you will see, you can see two people, worship ministers. One has been into it for years and a young man, maybe upcoming, and then maybe in an event, okay, well, we, want, we have two worship leaders, this and that. Fine. The other person too, because he's been into it, and then let's say maybe the person is no longer anointed, but the gifting is still there. But people have known him or her. And there's this young one coming that is just like David has been. They've not heard from him, but he's been in the closet. He's been in the secret place. He has already been. Uh, I don't know what word to use. So he's just coming out and say, okay, let's give him opportunity. Let's. You know, for people to, but that one is more anointed than the older one. I mean, the one that has been into the, into the, in, in, in the ministry for a long time. People are trying to follow the one that has been in the ministry for a long time. Like, okay, this one will be more anointed. But it's not measured by that. Mm. 
You mm. have to know the private life of this person. That's what true. we see mostly is what is in the public. But what is the private life of this person like? That is how you mm. know whether this person is anointed or not. Okay, true. can this anointing, like I, was, I, met, I cited an example now, that this person has been into a ministry for a long time. But maybe the person has not been uh, in touch because it's possible. Like somebody said, they said, you can put off a fan. And once you unplug it, it will still be rolling. But it's not connected to the source anymore. So you can still see this person singing, singing, thinking the anointing is still there. But I don't, I don't want to use the word that's been taken away. That's why I want to ask the question. Can anointing be revoked? Please, before pa Pastor, before Pastor answer this question, please, if you're watching us and you have any question, please um, type it in now. It's, on, it's live on Facebook. Please type in your questions and then we'll get it across to Pastor. Can anointing be revoked or be withdrawn? All right. Uh, well, let me approach that question this way. You know, uh, when we're talking about uh, somebody who has been in the ministry and it seems as if the fire has gone down. Yes. Uh -huh, because uh, sometimes the fire might have gone down, but it may not be completely out. Out, oh, true. Okay. And occasionally when the fire is down, it could also still do some real uh, business. You know, like you look at uh, Prophet Eli. Even though his fire had gone down, he was still able to make a decree, and Hannah still brought her baby. Mm -hmm. So occasionally the fire may go down because of the responsibility of keeping up, you know, with the fire. Sometimes some persons, once they get anointed, they get carried away by the euphoria of mm -hmm. the exploits of the that report they are getting that they forget they have to still service the fire. They still have roles, they still have responsibilities, they still have keep things to do, burning. keep the fire burning. Because the anointing of yesterday is only good for yesterday. There is always a new <laughs> task and you always need to, you know, get refreshed, mm. get refreshed. Because if you look at the people who have been able to break this generational barrier, you look at people that we grew up hearing their names, now we are, we are, growing also we still hear their names the younger generation are still hearing their names you want to wonder what is the secret behind that so the 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 the, the person who who is anointed who uh, maybe shall we say is manifesting a greater fire than the fellow who is yet to you probably whose fire is going down it may just be that uh, it is the influence of the public glare, glare the fame, the whatever that has been able to overcome them. Because anyone who is going to be useful to God is a direct target of the devil, whatever yeah. the case may be, is a direct target. Because anyone who is going to be useful to God, there are two agendas, two purposes. God's purpose is to give life, and give it more abundantly. abundantly. The devil's purpose is to steal, to kill, to destroy. And so once somebody is anointed to give life more abundantly, mm. once mm. someone is anointed to destroy the works of the devil, the devil comes after such a person. And that's why if the person has not been grounded in the place of consecration, is that if the person has not been grounded in the place of you know, uh, you know, holiness and all that, it becomes a difficult task for such a person to maintain uh, that, that fame that will come. Hmm. It, it will be difficult well, for that person. Thing. And that is why if someone is yet to be announced, don't announce yourself. Wait for hey. God to do the announcing. <laughs> Because we live in a generation where everybody just wants to be heard. Everybody just mm. wants to be heard. I need people to know that I carry this grace. Beautiful. But is the time ripe? As God said, this is your time. Has God cooked you enough? I shared with some people uh, recently. I, I said, 
after was a king, he said, I found among the sons a king of my mother and they anointed David. The next thing you would have uh, expected that will happen is David, carry your bag, go to the palace. Before you get to the palace, Saul will be dead and then you start to reign. The national prophet has anointed you. But this man still had to wait for more than 15 years, moving from cave to, and you'll be wondering, how come I'm anointed and I'm not seeing what I'm anointed to do? There are things that he went through that were in school, where God was schooling him, preparing him, so that he can have uh, a lasting kingdom. He might, not, he might not have appreciated the anointing that came upon his life if he had moved from that place where he was anointed straight to the palace. But he waited for more than 15 years. He knew what he saw. He knew how many times he escaped death. He knew how many times he lived in enemy camp. He knew how many things. So when it comes to praising God, they said, David, dance. With understanding. He had a reason. <laughs> he knew that for me to get here, ah, no, it had to be the hand of God. So God. The, 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 the person... Who, whose fire has been going down, the person needs to go and re-examine himself, and you know, access, you know, where the, the, the whole uh, mix-up came from, you know, sure. and go back to your private, you know, that private life, that closet mm -hmm. life, if it is faulty, there's no point trying to make a show in the public. It's just a waste of time. People just keep on looking for engagement, ministerial engagement. Come and invite me. I can sing. I can do this. I can do that. But if that private closet life is faulty, then it's something that one would need to really give attention to. I don't know if I've been able to answer that question. Oh, correct. Yes. You have All been right. able to do that. And then you have even moved to our next question about the timing. That there is a time right. David went between the time David was uh, anointed and when, when he was appointed a king, there was a process. But so many people now they don't want to go through any process, they just want to. I can imagine if it was uh, this time that um, David was anointed, would have given okay, please, please, please snap me as he's anointing me now, put it on there, <laughs> <laughs> just upload it. Can't I? I'm, I'm, I'm just been, I, I'm just been anointed. Watch out, watch this face, you know. <laughs> But we don't want to, many people, we don't, most, most of the people now don't want to go through the process. Mm. They just want to know, okay, I think I have this anointing. They just want to lot in. I said, okay, like you said, everybody wants to be heard. You just want to make a post. You just want to do this. You just want to do that. Mm. But, it's just but, but if I may add, understand the timing. Yes. Mm. If I may add, if I may add that, you know, most people, when they, when they quote this scripture, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. repentance. It's always with the mindset that once God has given me this gift, it is mine wow. forever. And there's not anybody can do about it. Even if I go to sin, the gift and calling are without ah, yeah, yeah. You know, I need to make it you know, clear that somebody may have a gift but the ability to use that gift comes from an enablement. Yeah. If that enablement is not there, the gift you is think. useless. Yes, sir. It's just like you look at the old prophet, you know, the old prophet in Bethel, God had a message for Bethel. He called the prophet in Judah to go and deliver a message in Bethel. And the man who was uh, well known to be prophet, you know, was living in the same town and God had to import a prophet from outside. Mm. Everybody knew this man. I said, this man is a prophet. But yet there was an assignment that was meant for a prophet. And God imported another prophet to come and deliver that. Uh, and then you would have, People would have concluded that, okay, the gift has been revoked. This man has, the anointing is no longer working. Yeah, these are not that. But when he tricked the younger prophet into disobeying God, the prophecy came from him. Mm. 
the old prophet now, he prophesied. And the prophecy that he gave was a judgment of the young prophet. Mm. And so mm. uh, no matter how, how uh, low fire might have gone, it still burns. But Burned. the point I'm making is that the anointing that has been released upon the vessel is for results. Once the closest life is distorted, that result will not be. Samson said, I will go out as before. But you must that. know that the that Lord has left him. Departed. There was, aside from his head that was shaving off, he still was in his normal stature. He was still the same Samson that everybody knew. Everybody knew. But the ability to deliver results, to make the impossible possible, was long taken. Now you have to die with his enemy. Mm. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, okay, let me just go to the to the next question because this anointing, the, the anointing, like I say, is the hand of God upon someone's life. And that's what separates one from others. That yes. distinguishes one from others. So all we have to do, the gift and the calling of God that without repentance, that doesn't mean we can just go and put our head into sin and say, my God is merciful, my Father is merciful and all that. All we have to do is just to keep the fire burning every day on daily basis, stay connected with the Holy Spirit to make sure the fire does not go out. Don't grieve yeah, the absolutely. Holy Spirit. Don't do things that, okay, God, your hand is upon me. Just let me free myself and do things because the grace is available. It's not done that way. It's absolutely. not done that way. We don't take things for granted. And I see God helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. His hand will Amen. not be removed from my life. His hand will not be Amen. removed from my life. In Amen. the name of Jesus. So Psalm 23, verse 5, as we are rounding up. I don't know if you have any questions yet, please. When we have, let me know. Psalm 23 says, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over, my cup overflows. So the anointing is on the head. What happens to the cup? <laughs> you know, yes. that's, that's, that's one, one interesting thing that I also need to point out when it comes to the anointing being released upon a worship leader. You see, most of the time, uh, we, we think that God sees me as I am. He takes me as I am. Mm. But no one appreciates diamond in his raw state. No one appreciates gold in his raw state. It is when it is refined that it is celebrated and appreciated. There are quite a number of us that instead of us to do something with our gift, improve on it, we just were, no, 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 I, it's natural, it's team born. There's nothing I can do to improve it. It's just there. Ah. No. This was a man who did not go to a university. And by the time you look at the book of Psalms, David wrote about 73 of those. By the time you go through how he was able to write, I believe that People who had English as their first degree or who are major in linguistics, who are major in poets or whatever, they will be able to say a lot about the way David wrote. Mm. And these are the things that came in the place of inspiration in his incubation. Incubation. Because okay. you, you, there, are, there, is, there is very little that you can learn from the four walls of the school. David was able to learn even before university courses were created to attend to, you know, simile, this is a synecdoche, this is metaphor, this is this. This was a man who was drawing from the realm of the spirit and was penning it down. Anyone who will, you know, uh, give out something that everybody will say, where did you get it from? you will stay in the place of the Holy Spirit and you can be rest assured that by the time you come out, people will say, ah, ah. And he, I mean, occasionally, there are times that in the, in the place of study, I've had things that I never knew and I had to go on Google and I saw. Mm. 
Google. You no, know? and people nowadays, you know, they just they do. We hardly see people who want to pay the price of getting inspiration for songs. Who want to write the songs that the Spirit is teaching them? You know, the Bible says in the Book of Job that uh, God teaches songs in the night. You know, there are people who say they are worship leaders, and you ask them, how many songs has the Lord given you? Yeah, well, they can't uh, really say. They just pick a secular song and then change the beat, and change the beat, <laughs> and then, and as much as every, everybody is dancing to it, they feel that they, they, they really receive mm. something. Job this chapter 5, Jesus verse 10. Inside. It has God inside. Uh, yes, I think it's Job chapter 35, verse 10. You Job know? 35, and verse 10. This, 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 this man was a product of the secret place. And so when he was talking about you anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over, it was just you know a pictorial representation of, a, of an overflowing grace. Overflowing. Mm. Is an is just a pictorial representation because when you see a cup that is overflowing, you know that ah, that means it's well in excess. Well in excess. And this uh, also is important to state that. Anointing comes in measures. Okay. It was only Jesus Christ that was anointed without measure. Every okay. other person on the face of the earth, we have measures. There are measures that are given. And you can only increase this measure in the place of faithfulness. The more faithful you are, the more the measure is increased, the measure is increased, the measure is increased. So it's... it's uh, is a pictorial representation that David was saying that when you uh, you anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. This was a man who was a shepherd boy who was not schooled, who had no degree, who had no. But if you look at the exploits of David, do you know that David invented music instruments, musical instruments, he invented musical instruments? The Bible makes it clear. Let me. Let me give us that portion of the scripture uh, in the book of Amos, Amos, Amos. chapter 6, verse 5, 2 Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 6. David invented. Can you imagine somebody so sold out to his gift and passion that is just looking at how do I make a melody? What do I, what do I put together that can make a sound that is acceptable to God? And it moved from being just a poet to being a prophet. If you read Psalm 22, you see how he prophesied about the Lord's death, the Lord's burial, the Lord's betrayal, the Lord's resurrection. One man, over a thousand years before Jesus was born, in the place of his service, in the place of his calling, he was graduated, he became, he was a man that operated as both king and priest. Because he, he was a prophet, he was a king. Mm. In the place of his writing songs, he was prophesying. Because when you, when you fellowship, when you stay in that, in that place of incubation, hi, there are things that are in the womb of the spirit that will be released Release. to you. Nice. Sometimes it may, not be for you, it may not be even relevant to you personally, but it will be on record for generations to come, like Daniel. Mm -hmm. Daniel was seeing things about even the, the Armageddon, the things that are yet to even happen. The angel had to say, just don't worry yourself. You will grow old and die, but uh, just write this down. This is, this and so it's just happen. that sacrifice for us to wait in that place, in that private place in that closet tarry. and say lord just tarry just ask him just fellowship with him just by the time you stay long enough he will give you something that people will say no this is not ordinary when moses came back mm. people could not behold his face mm. he had to use a veil to cover his face if we behold his glory by the time we appear his glory will show up Thank you so much. You know, I, it, this just reminded me of a post I saw on Facebook a few days ago when uh, Pastor Paula DeFaris of House on the Rock was um, asking Minister Dunsio Yekong that, how do you get this song? That 
you know, you look at the lyrics of the song, they just have to connect you to God directly because there are some songs, especially in songs, when you look at these lyrics, you will just be speaking in tongues. So I was asking that, what is, what, what is your secret? And when he took the mic, he first appreciated him, and he said, I stay. I stay at the place. You know, like, he, he, he's someone that, he said he doesn't joke with his private life. Hmm. You know, when you are, when you, when you know what you're doing, like laid emphasis, this is what I do. This is what I do. He said, I always stay at the place. He said that God, because he was acting on what God told him, that just have that fellowship with me, then I will give you a well. Wow. I'm just trying to summarize what he said. But what he was saying is, is not when it comes to, okay, oh, this is the time I want to have with God. He doesn't joke with it. Mm. And if we want to receive truly from God, we need to be at the secret place. We need to just Absolutely. be there. We need to be there. If we want to receive, that's, where, that's why it's called the secret place. Because the deep and the secret things of God are being revealed. Yeah, absolutely. Like they said, that God is everywhere, but doesn't meet with people everywhere. Absolutely. You just have to have absolutely. that place. You meet with him if you want to hear. And it's not where you just rush in and say, God, eh, I have 10 minutes. Let's just talk. Oh, my sharp. I had a ballad. Oh, sharp. Lord, I'm waiting. I want to hear. I want to hear. Please tell me your counsel. No, 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 no. Please, what, what are you saying? What are you saying? If, if it's a yes, let there be light. If it's a let them take light. God, what are you saying? No. Mm. The world is sorry. Just linger. Just stay. And just say, God, I'm waiting. And you when know, God maybe sees I that just... readiness. Mm. Please say, when God sees that readiness, then he's ready to pour it out to you. Please you know, okay, occasionally, occasionally when I'm, uh, by the grace of God, I've been able to, at least one or two times like that, I've been able to receive a message that I've not had anywhere before. Mm. But surprisingly, those messages don't come because we just uh, breathing and say, all right, God, just uh, say something. Let's Sometimes you have stayed hours. You are not even thinking about any message. You are not even thinking about someone. You are just fellowshipping. You are just worshipping. You are just thanking him. You are just, and then you just say, okay. Network. It begins to open up. And before you know what is going on, you can write, you can actually write a book from that same passage and is probably a passage people have been seeing you have even known for a long time but it can just bring your attention there but it doesn't come thinking i say hey, well, i had it on the worship I should tarry. So God, I have this. Let's make it fast. Uh, he does like that. Yeah. Nice you are muted. Hello? Okay. Yes, I can. I hear wasn't you hearing you before. All right. Okay. Are you done? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. okay. Sorry, because the network, I didn't, I didn't hear you very well. It okay, was... okay. I was just talking about waiting. That you, that you can't just breathe in and say, Lord, just give me two hours. I have two hours. Just everything you want yeah. to share with me. Let's just, Most of no. the time, you, you'll be lost. You, you even lose touch with time. You just want to no. be there. Just fellowship with him. And then he will come and then uh, impact on you what he wants. <laughs> Did I hear Apostle Arome that when he first said, when he, he said he can be, he can speak in tongues for 10 hours. Hmm. That when he first said, so a lady for that matter said, okay, I think it's a lady that the person said that he, she speaks in tongues for three hours daily. He was like, ah. So she tried to, she, that he tried it for 30 minutes. He was like, hey, when is this thing going to end? Taking the time, taking the time. But you know, over time, consistency, it's just to build that relationship. Like you, like some people, they don't, they can't miss their breakfast. It's a lifestyle. Mm. So you know that I want to meet with God. I want to have this time with God. 
it, it should be a lifestyle. It should be a lifestyle Absolutely. and say, okay, no, and I have to stay to this thing. Okay, we have a few minutes left because I'm looking at us leaving this place like 5.15. Um, okay, lastly, let me just read from your book, Placing a, Dem a Demand on the Anointing. It's a great book on anointing, and I recommend it for everybody to please reach out and get him. Just send a DM to him or send a message to him on Facebook. Placing a demand. You, you mentioned in Chapter 2 especially, that there are none as non beneficiaries of anointing. Can we wrap up with that? Non beneficiaries. All right. Uh, well, there are there are persons that even though they stay in the rain, they can't be wet. No matter hey, how come close again. They get. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> they are in the rain you and know, can't be wet. Then no matter how close they get to the anointed, the anointing cannot be approximated for their advantage or to their advantage. And that is because they have not met the basic requirements for the anointing to work in their favor. There are persons who, you know, uh, are just too, uh, how do you put it now? When you get too familiar, Mm. Uh -huh. There are persons who operate in the realm of familiarity, and no matter how anointed the person may be, the anointing will not work in such a person's advantage. Look at um, Elijah. Elijah had been moving around and moving around, and at Jericho, they had a problem that had been there since Joshua chapter 6. And the problem was not resolved until Elijah left. But when the people saw Elijah, they said, well, we are not going to miss this opportunity. They called Elijah's attention. And so there are persons who are non-beneficiaries of the anointing, those who, are, who take, their, they, they, they take the things of God for granted. Granted. With the same mouth with which you want God to speak for prophecy, is the same mouth with which you speak profanity. Is the same mouth with which you, you know, uh, joke about the things of God. Is the same mouth with which you do things and you expect that God will still use the same. It won't happen that way. And so, when it's about consecration, when it's about dedication, once you are called aside, you are completely sold out to God. Then you stay called out. And so if somebody says, all right, I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to do some fasting. I'm going to do some praying. In fact, I'm not going to do three hours of 10 or 10 hours. I'm going to do a whole month of praying in tongues. And whether God likes it or not, it's going to give me, it's going to anoint me. If that person is unclean, there's no way the anointing will work. You have to put yourself in a situation, in a place where God can see you first before he can impact you. You have to put yourself in a place where God can see you because the eyes of God cannot be held in iniquity. In so iniquity. there are persons that no matter how highly anointed the man of God may be, he can mm. pray for them, they won't receive because, not because the man is not anointed, but because of their own disposition to God. You can see but, as the how he gave the rod that you should take it to the child, the dead child. But the rod didn't do and, anything. And as I came back, you know, yes. and uh, told Elijah and said, Elijah said, the boy didn't wake. In <laughs> other words, he was not even expecting the boy the to wake up. To wake up. He wasn't expecting the guy. So it's just, you can imagine the same people who were called sons of the prophets. Mm. In fact, Elisha met some of them on campus. But then, out of 150 or how many persons saw Elijah when he was being taken up? Not now. It was mm -hmm. only Elisha who got the double portion. Yes. So yes. what happened to the others? So if you are not interested in being anointed why engage in a school of prophets why did you enroll 
if you did mm. not have that as your end goal, if you did not have that to that, this man that is our leader, I will carry the grace that is carrying. I'm Amen. going to you know, walk in a greater anointing than it is walking. Why did you enroll? They all had that intention when they filled their application, if they ever did, that mm. I'm coming to the school of prophet because I want to train to become a prophet. a prophet but along the way their vision changed they began to hear things they began to but elisha came and he said i'm going for this and this is what i'm going to get he refused distraction <laughs> and so the anointing of the and man of god it. worked for him and he was it able to get it worked for him it worked for him Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Femi. We are really, 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 really being blessed. Thank and I know you so to much. An extent, to an extent. This issue, and the one key word that I'm taking out of, because it, it, it was coming up in every, almost every of your statements, and that word is consecration. And that's one word I want everybody to take home with, to go home with. Consecration. When it comes to anointing, we just have to live that life that is consecrated to God, dead to self, and just yield to him and say, Lord, I'm at your service. And let our motives be right. I want to Absolutely. say thank you so much for your time. We appreciate thank you. you. So God much. bless you, and we'll continue to strengthen you in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Okay, so Amen. we have one more minute, two more minutes. We're rounding up. And uh, right. this is Q&A, so I'm just going to show, uh, please let's show our next month's Q&A. Q and A question and answers, or I mean, question and answer series on worship. And then, like I said, this is the sixth one we're having. So the next month is going to be the seventh one. And we're so privileged to be hosting a couple. That will be our first time hosting couples, you know, that will be our guests. And then we're looking at balancing your song set list with the leading of the Holy Spirit when it comes to worship. When it comes to worship. So I want us to save it is on the 15th of May, 2021. And it's also same time, 4 p.m. So please, let's invite others. Let's reach out to people. Balance it because this is very, very key. This is very, very key because fine, some said it is good, but what is the place of the Holy Spirit? How do we balance it together that we don't get carried away with the songs that we have said, okay, we have planned. That's okay. These are the songs I want to sing. What is it? If the Holy Spirit is cautioning you and say, okay, I want you to go in this direction. How do we balance? And we still minister to God's people. I see God blessing us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank mm -hmm. you so much once again, Pastor Femi, and everyone that connected with us. We're sorry we started late because we're having issues with um, connecting to our YouTube and Facebook. So we had to just put the Facebook on hold of which this video is recorded and is going to be uploaded to our YouTube later. But thank you. To everyone that connected with us, with us on Facebook, we appreciate you. I will say thank you so much. Then see you next month, by God's grace, on question and answer series on worship. Have a wonderful weekend and have a wonderful service tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. All right.